welcome to the Reality Revolution. I am your host, Brian Scott. Today we're going to talk about escaping the matrix. One of the things that I find very interesting and incredibly important when analyzing and evaluating the concept of the new earth and a global transition into a different consciousness, a great awakening on this planet, is the seeming impossibility of this happening because this planet is asleep. We are in a matrix. This matrix is made up of myths, falsehoods, and manipulations that people have naturally, by human nature, and other more devious purposes, found themselves a part of. We are born into a world. We are told this is how it is. We are constantly told little lies. And over time, we start to think that the world is this thing that we have repeatedly been programmed into. The human mind is so easy to hypnotize and manipulate. And so many of us have fallen into a sleep. A sleep of ritual that goes on on a daily basis based upon our past experiences. And we are all locked in this seeming matrix. This matrix that has over time evolved as a form of control. And we have to escape this matrix, this thing that tells us how society and the world is supposed to be. That tells us this is how the world is. And we have to escape from this matrix. The escaping from the matrix is really part of this movement into fourth density or fifth dimension. It is a part of this movement to a higher level of consciousness. It's interesting to go back and read the works of George Gurdjieff, who was an amazing writer in addition to Uspensky. And these are Russian writers that explored consciousness and what they believed was essentially a sort of matrix that has formed. And looking at their work, they called it the work. This process of remembering who we are and awakening from this sleep. It's a little complicated and dense, and I've considered reading Gurdjieff's work in the past for an episode, but we are all victims of what we believe has happened in our past, in our history, in our teachings, and what we were taught in school. There are myths that make up our realities. Myths are part of every tribe, and every culture is swallowed by its tribal myths. If you want to be part of the tribe, you have to buy the myths. Or you can choose to exit the matrix, and that's what we're trying to do. The list of Western myths that have swallowed our consciousness and power is endless. It dates back thousands of years to the point we hardly know the truth anymore. The saints and spiritual teachers have told us how incorrect our history is as they have tried to awaken us. This is how we lost ourselves. Who are we really? Where did we originate? What are our true historical stories? What powers might have been withheld from us? Many mysteries still remain. So more than ever, it's time to return to the truth because that is where our power lies. We have been held hostage in the Maya, another term for illusion, long enough. We've reached the tipping point of delusion, lies, and corruption. can only tip towards the truth now, or we're lost. When a culture becomes inured in the lie, it's very difficult for it to grow beyond the decay and the disease that develops when a lie takes over a culture. That is when the sages, mystics, visionaries, healers, and shamans are most needed to bring us back to the truth, to our center, to our wholeness. Yes, we need our Western shamans. We are in the post-truth society now. There are lies told on television all the time, in politics all the time. There are big lies that lead to big revolts and major problems. 
William Casey made the infamous statement, when everything Americans believe is false, we'll know we've accomplished our goal. And what goal is that? The total stealth of your power, soul, and dharmic path so your life is not your own and you have no idea who you are as you walk to your programmed death. This outrageous statement is the reality of where we are today, led by people who believe there is something to be gained by this demented viewpoint. How did we get here? By persistent, consistent disinformation, deception, repetitive trauma, illusion, maybe even black magic, and for sure sustained mind control. When did it begin in modern times? I believe it's an ancient plan. Charlotte Thompson Isabert is one person I recommend reading. Charlotte was born from a secret society family, but as a woman was not part of the inner circle. She knew nothing of their programs until she became an educator and began to observe the destructive nature of the educational system. She began documenting what she saw as a clear plan to destroy the American educational system and harm children. She's the author of The Deliberate Dumbing Down of America, a bestseller about the elite's plan to lower the standard of education to make Americans stupider and easier to control. Now, I don't know if that's true. And the purpose of this episode is not to go down any conspiracy theory rabbit holes in any way. But we have been victim to things like this. B.F. Skinner's Operant Conditioning is another book, which is the process by which humans and animals learn to behave in such a way as to obtain rewards and avoid punishments. It's a classic psychological text. This was used to force children to react in ways desired by educators to reinforce obedience, stupidity, and brainwashing. The goal is to squash individualism and create a docile workforce. These forces that are doing this, I believe they are aligned against a new earth. They're aware. New earths form all the time. And they're going to try their hardest to take away our power of thought. Because if we do not think freely, we cannot create reality freely. Free thought is discouraged. And brilliant children are told they're odd or outsiders or they're scorned. I believe that we've gone through 60 years of brainwashed children that have been dumbed down all over the world. Not just in America. So how do we escape this? How do we escape this dumbing down manipulation that we are victims of just by living in this existence, in this incarnation that holds us down from truly expanding to another level, becoming service to others beyond our own egos? We have been in an egocentric, violent, insensitive, angry, emotionless society ruled by warriors causing destruction and war fascism holocausts for a very long time now there's so much illusion around us causing us to separate from one another to move away from surface yet we live all under the same God and walk upon the same Mother Earth. We all have beating hearts that flow with red blood. And we are all part of the same ecosystem and energy matrix of Earth together. So somewhere along the way, we became split in our consciousness. It's time for us to heal the split they created and exit the false matrix as you heal. This manufactured split in your consciousness, you will naturally begin to love yourself. This will begin to generate love for humanity within you, and you will naturally gravitate towards harmony and oneness with your fellow brothers and sisters. One barrier in overcoming the split in consciousness is the rise in philosophies that tell you never to talk, think, or look at anything that is negative for fear it might take you over somehow. This 
spreading belief system popularized by various groups and perhaps even myself when I'm talking about thinking positively. I'm talking about moving beyond that. The process of reality creation involves using your thoughts to create reality. As you go down this path, you realize there's a part of you that is thinking to create this reality that you are not aware of. And that's where the matrix is created. That's because it's your shadow. It's an insidious and very psychologically dangerous thing. Denying your shadow self completely. Of course, we need to be positive. We have to think positive thoughts, but we cannot deny the shadow self that is within us. And by excusing it, we allow it to live and exist and do things behind our backs. It's the elephant in the living room that is destroying our world. Our collective shadow is being ignored. So to deny this shadow is to embrace a distorted sense of reality of only half truths about our world in which actually contains dark and light, yin and yang in everything. So we can't ignore the shadow aspect of life. It translates into these extreme forms of racism and addiction, violence, sexism, abuse, greed, murder, rape, all of it. When people fail to acknowledge their own shadow, they are missing a vital component in their power in their path of awakening when you acknowledge the shadow and you reclaim the lost power and embrace it you have the potential to transform and recharge and rejuvenate yourself and to escape from the matrix we cannot exit the matrix until we know the full extent of its existence and the boundaries between it and our true selves To avoid consciously engaging your own shadow self and everyone on earth has one is to walk around with a split consciousness by turning away and believing you might create more darkness by putting any attention on it you're reinforcing the very evil from which you are trying to flee as long as you keep your darkness unconscious it still has power over you as long as we avoid looking at the larger darkness in the world today it also has power over us That is what evil depends upon for its existence. It laughs at us for our unconsciousness. But if we claim our true spiritual power, we can take back our power that they have taken from us and reclaim our planet and begin to create the new earth. If you insist on only seeing one aspect of reality, you reinforce duality and strengthen evil. Do you really believe that your own light is so weak that it cannot face down darkness? Are you so afraid of darkness that your light will be overtaken by it? You hear some religious groups talk about avoiding evil and they have the implication that they don't have the power to overcome anything. You have the power to disperse darkness completely. You will not be taken by the dark unless you allow it to happen. You are all powerful. Gurdjieff says there are three illusions that are keeping us in this matrix. The first illusion is if something happens to us that we don't like, we do not accept responsibility for it, but rather blame others or circumstances for what happened. It is not our fault. Of course, if things happen that we do like, we are perfectly willing to accept the fact that it's being caused by us. The second illusion is that we think we know ourselves. If we could really see how we behave, we would be shocked. Remember the first time we heard our recorded voice? We were probably surprised and not pleasantly at how it sounded. If we could see how we act, the same thing would happen. We are probably much better judges of how others act than of ourselves. There are many reasons why we don't know ourselves, which we will discuss a little bit later, but The main thing is that since we are under the illusion that we know ourselves, we refuse to believe that our level of being causes unpleasant things to happen to us. 
The third illusion, Gurdjieff says, that prevents us from believing our level of being attracts our life is the illusion that things will get better over time, that things will change favorably for us without our doing anything to make them better. The truth is that as we get older, things get worse, not better. We start to crystallize and become fixed in our patterns, which make change that much more difficult. This is why we get older, we become more difficult to live with. We have these patterns or rigid edges that rub against others in wrong ways. And because these patterns are fixed, they're extremely difficult to change or even adapt a bit to other people's patterns. Nothing will change unless we change our level of being. Gurdjieff also talks about the magnetic center and the A, B, and C influences. There are three kinds of influences called A, B, and C. All A influences come from life. They are the influences that make us get along in the material world, whether it is to make money, build a career, establish a relationship, have a family, or gain fame and fortune for ourselves. They keep us tied to the material world. We think we're progressing under A influences, but it is really like a hall of distorted mirrors where we think that by looking at the mirrors, we're going straight ahead when in fact we are going around in circles but never realize it. The influences of A have no connection with B or C influences and their main functions. For an extreme example of an A influence, think of a man in a crowd where he adopts the crowd's position and is so influenced that any independent thought or independence from the crowd virtually disappears when he becomes part of the mass phenomenon. Vadim Zeeland's novel, Reality Transurfing, gives an excellent example of this as the pendulum and where people fall into influence with the pendulum. Check out my episodes on the pendulum. The C influences are on the other extreme. They come directly from enlightened masters such as Christ, Buddha, and Muhammad. The key point is that the only way we can get C influences orally from the master himself. It is a direct transmission without any intermediary coming between the master and the listener. The B influences are the teachings of the enlightened masters coming to us through intermediary sources. For example, Christ's parables in the New Testament are example of B teachings because we read about them. In fact, the men who wrote them, such as Paul, never actually heard Christ speak. Those who actually heard Christ speak were getting C influences. The same goes for Buddha. Those who heard him received C influences. His students who wrote about the Buddha and his teachings sometimes hundreds of years after Buddha's death are giving us B influences. The important point is to remember that B influences are not influences from life, but from higher sources. And if a man has a magnetic center, he can, to a certain extent, distinguish between A and B influences. These are the influences that are creating what we believe our reality to be. The best way I can give you an example is in Plato's Republic. In this allegory, men are chained in a cave and all they see are the shadows reflected on the wall behind them. They believe these shadows are what reality is. When one of them escapes and gets above ground and sees that shadows are not the actual reality, and then goes back into the cave and reports his findings to the other chained prisoners, none of them believe him. We are going through the process of discovering what is outside of the cave. Gurdjieff identified four things that keep us from moving beyond the matrix. The biggest obstacle, number one, was probably identification. As with the actor in Jesus of Montreal, who started to believe and act as if he were Jesus outside of the play. We identify with the events in our lives and become one with them, and our real self disappears. The person whose whole identity is tied up with his finances might commit suicide when, for example, he loses all of his money. This was not uncommon during the Great Depression in the 30s. We become whatever we have identified with. If we have an illness and all we do is think about it, we become the illness. We might be thinking, well, if I have a financial problem or illness, it is only natural that I would think about it. Well, the important point is to realize that becoming identified with a problem or situation is not something we do consciously, but pondering the situation, we do it automatically, instantaneously. We are not merely thinking about the subject, we are becoming obsessed with it. Secondly is internal considering versus external considering. 
This is very important. I think a lot of people don't do this. It helps us to stay within this matrix. The matrix that we're in, as Gurdjieff would explain, is external considering is when we put ourselves in the shoes of other people. If you look at someone else and something happens to them and you consider it from their perspective, you see yourself in their shoes, you see yourself there. When we consider that point of view, that's external considering. Internal considering is when we always see things from our own point of view. Internal considering. So you're in the matrix when you're just thinking about things from your own point of view. We feel people don't respect us enough. They hurt our feelings. We don't consider why people act from their point of view. We just consider what their actions do to us. Anytime we feel offended, we can take that as a signal that we will start internal considering. If we cannot stop this internal considering, the more it will grow and spread over all areas of our life. And if all we understand of the world is just from our own perspective, we will never escape the matrix. The third is self-justification. It's sort of a variation of internal considering. If something is not gone as we thought it should, we spend our time in endless self-justification for what we did or omitted to do. So we don't have to take responsibility for it. We blame others or the situation and end up in the state of internal considering. And Gurdjieff also says self-pity. This is the opposite of self-justification. Instead of trying to justify what we did or did not do, we feel sorry for ourselves. Poor me. No one understands me. And we wallow in our own self-pity. It's somehow a delicious, if perverse feeling, and we often don't want to give it up. Both self-justification and self-pity are forms of identification. By doing this, it leads us into a negative state, Gurdjieff says, and we lose force and power. We can become violent and we lose contact with our higher centers. These higher centers awaken us from the matrix. So another book I recommend is Emerging from the Matrix by Cellini. And there are several others. Anything by Dr. Joe Dispenza is going to give you several steps to awaken from the matrix. I have a meditation on the channel, Escaping from the Matrix. And really, it's a lot of sitting in the silence. And the more you do that, connect to your silence. You start to move outside of this reality that you've created around yourself. There's several things that we can do to emerge from the matrix. We really need to focus on the spiritual aspects, the mental aspects, the physical aspects, and the emotional. If we figure out some different things we can do to, that encompass these things, in my own experience, I believe we can escape from this matrix. So the first step is really to gather healers around you, seek out an authentically trained Reiki master with correct training in original Reiki form, or find someone who understands how to move energy and heal the energy systems in the body. Find someone intuitive, awakened, light-based, dynamic, talented, and unafraid to take you into the depths of your soul healing. That can be an action that you can take. It may not be available to everyone, but it is a very powerful thing to do is to find somebody that can help you move your energies. A second step you can take is to build a sacred space. Find a place in your house where you do your meditation. Create an altar. Make it reflective of your soul. Give yourself a space where you feel free. Try not to bring anything dark or negative into the altar. Keep this area positive with crystals, incense, candles, just a place of power, a place that you can go. Third thing I would do is weed your garden mentally. Clear your mind of any persistent negative thoughts or beliefs. We're not talking about the shadow necessarily. Just saying if you're having persistent negative thoughts, it may be a sign that your shadow has not released anything, but anything you're clinging on to that is about doubt, 
shame, negativity, illness, self-loathing, fear, rage. It needs to be gone. You must transform your soul. I realize this is very difficult. It could take you many, many years, however long it takes. Just begin. Just imagine you own a large meadow. This meadow is filled with wildflowers. They look beautiful, but the meadow is filled with weeds that choke out the wildflowers and cause them to die. The same is true of your mind. Until you weed out the mental weeds of despair, doubt, and self-destruction, the flowers of your soul cannot fully grow and bloom. The soil itself must be healthy and strong. Persistence is key. Persistent thoughts create grooves in your brain and lead you to self-defeating thinking. They create what is known as thought forms or thoughts that have solidified and are now running the show. They need to be broken up like pieces of calcified bone growing twistedly out of the side of your toe. The bone blocks your taking steps, so thought forms do as well. Persistent thought forms of hatred, anger, illness, death, or greed are like secret poisons in the body. They'll eventually create disease, love, and truth will heal them. Bring them out into the light of day. They can be weeded just like a garden and new seeds of hope planted. Get a sheet of paper and write down thoughts you repeatedly have that are not hope-filled, that are negative, are filled with self-loathing, like I'm too fat, or I never will get a job, or I don't have the skills, or I'm not good enough, or I'm not lovable, or I'm always sick. Identify these. These are deeply ingrained beliefs, especially ones that come from our parents. They sink into our subconscious mind. And it's our subconscious mind that is creating this matrix that directs our lives and creates our opportunities. And limiting beliefs will act as barriers to the realization of your dreams. So weed your mental garden. Next to each of those statements that you write down, write the opposite. Instead of I'm unlovable, say I am loved unconditionally. You can create a statement for each of those and focus on the opposite. Try to do this every day until you have strongly removed these beliefs. Keep your affirmations on your altar. Ask the universe to help you with weeding your mental garden. A fourth step is to meet your false self. Make a list of false beliefs, actions, habits, behaviors, and characteristics that you believe tether you to your narcissistic mask ego after doing this list steps that you can take to dissolve these attachments to the narcissistic self and its destructive patterns such as ending an entrenched habit of lying bragging or overspending to comfort yourself begin to take these steps and in so doing cease any behaviors from your list that are keeping you limited narcissistic and serving only yourself. Give yourself an emotional mental treatment, emphasizing separating from your mask or egoic self. There is a false self that you have that you must eliminate, that is not really you, but something that you've created. That is part of this matrix. When Neo takes the red pill, he leaves his false self, this person that's working in some business, to discover who he really is. The fifth step is to find your true self. Don't restart bad habits. Just let your progress sink in. Give yourself credit. Then begin meditating on your true self. During the meditation, ask your true self to step forward. Allow your true self to identify itself and its true characteristics. Pay attention to your inner voice. Listen to the answers and do not judge with your rational, egoic mind. Just allow your inner truth to surface, slowly like bubbles to the surface of a pond. Eventually, their truth will become evident to you. Write down what comes up as the aspect of the true self. After making regular strong contact with your true self, where you feel the connection clearly, ask your true self to identify the traumatic trance and the traumatic trance bonds origins within yourself 
Write down what your true self tells you in meditation. During subsequent meditations, when you have established a strong, safe connection with your true self, ask your true self to begin safely dissolving the traumatic past. Write down what happens during this process. Seek help. You don't have to do this alone. This is where you may need to get help. Discuss it with your healer or counselor or someone that can help you. There are people that are available to help. Just continue to do this for at least 21 days. Another step is to connect in sacred dialogue. Learn to create a dialogue with your true self that reaches deep into your soul, even your higher self, and awakens long dormant parts of yourself. You may need to go somewhere far away, be alone for a while, or follow your passion to be able to do this particular step. The suppressed, false, illusory world we live in blocks your soul's emergence. It remains asleep until you bring it to the surface. You must speak to your sleeping soul as if you are the teacher, the parent, the guru, the coach, the loved one, the personal trainer, and the Buddha. Become your own personal Yoda. You might be the one in the corner, the only one. So when no one else is there, you must undertake the resuscitation of your lost, stolen, or broken spirit. You must learn to dialogue with your inner self. Shamans show how to do this, as do spiritual teachers, mystics, monks, and other sages of the soul. Become one. Develop your spiritual strength by entering into the secret labyrinth of your soul to find yourself again. Use Reiki. Use chakra awakening use crystals use anything that's hypnotically related that is in the essence of trying to awaken you meditations and just sitting in the silence you can try a sacred dialogue something like this you can say i am now speaking to my higher self the true self present eternally by the power vested in me i command the ego to step aside to allow healing and love in I am living imprisoned behind the narcissistic mask it is safe to step up free now I will be loved and cared for when I release this mask does not serve me but cages my spirit my love and my power and sabotages my life my dreams and my destiny my ego came into being within my mother's womb in other lifetimes and experiences and during current trauma to serve my soul in the sojourn until I was ready now I've come into being because I am no more afraid and believe in myself and let go of this mask You can let go of it that way. You can write something else yourself. Create a sacred dialogue. Talk to yourself. Command yourself. Give yourself affirmations. Those are things that you can do. Let's talk about physically, though. To escape from the matrix. It's not just the mind. It's the entire body, which is also a brain in itself. So the seventh step is to purify yourself. As much as possible... Try a purified diet. Health begins with what you eat or don't eat. Begin to eat an organic diet free of adulterated foods and sugars and toxins and chemicals, pesticides and hormones and steroids, which all contribute to the matrix. If you can give up meat, do so. At the very least, eat organic meat. Factory farmed meat is the source of more disease than almost any single food on earth. It creates heart disease, obesity, and many other illnesses. Take a hard look at your eating habits and begin a detox program. There's been trauma. There will be food addictions used to mask it. Perhaps other addictions as well. There's always an eating disorder tied to sexual traumas as well. Addictions to sugar. If you were sexually abused early in your childhood, you get hooked on sugar to endure the violation to your body. Something like that. You have to change your diet. And you know what you have been eating that you need to stop. 
There's a voice inside of you that tells you, and you need to escape from that to purify your body. The eighth step is to achieve some level of sobriety. We're talking about an addiction. We are all addicted to everything. It's not just drugs. We have addictions to food. We have addictions to things. So we need to reach a point where nothing is addicting to us. You're not going to transform your soul if you are actively engaged in an addiction. Addiction is a holistic illness. The mind, body, emotion, and spirit are all sick and out of balance. They require comprehensive care. The ninth step is to strengthen your temple. Begin exercising. You don't have to become the next Arnold Schwarzenegger. There are many simple possibilities. Start walking, stretching, doing Qigong. Check out my book for a set of exercises you can do for energy. Find a yoga routine that works and do it at home. Practice Tai Chi in your living room. Take a dance class. Do some jazzercise or join a gym. Learn a routine that includes weight-bearing exercises. But get a professional trainer to start you off. Never try to lift weights or do too much if you are out of shape. Use your common sense. If you can't afford a gym and want to keep it simple, walk an hour a day. Get the blood flowing. It awakens your mind. Once you start it, you'll gain energy and strength. The health of the body will stimulate the mind and you will begin to heal and awaken. I do believe that exercising is an important part. The tenth step is to release toxic energies. I believe that you can do this through Qigong exercises, body work, moving the energy out of the body. Anybody that knows Reiki knows how to do this. You've received so much in your bodily tissues over the years. It can be difficult to extricate these things. And there are a variety of things that you can look into. I recommend trauma be removed with myofacial release work and craniosacral therapy. If you look those up, too much to go into detail here. But understand that your body is holding energies emotions in your body become aware of them in your meditations and release these things you can do muscle testing and ask yourself questions about them there's ways to identify what's in your body and what things you need to change you can find this just by working out to begin with you'll start to notice these things the 11th step is to live naturally live off the grid as much as possible the Earth's electromagnetic field has been compromised by electricity and power poles and nuclear power and computers and TV, satellites. All these things are making up the matrix. The more electricity, computers, TV that you use, the more electromagnetic field is impacted negatively. This in turn can impact your health, halt your spiritual progress. When the field is interfered with, your own energy field is compromised and your yin-yang energy will be out of balance. Use your intuition and awareness. If you feel like they're dulled, then it may be because you're around this electromagnetic field in a certain way. Install solar if you can. Learn to char charge your phones and other technological products with solar. Stay away from processed foods. Also, you know, grow a garden and eat as much organic and natural food as possible. Those are little examples that you can do to live naturally. The twelfth step is to exit the matrix of mind control. Now, I know this is hard. It's hard for me. But stop watching TV as much as possible. Stop listening to the radio. Don't overuse social media. There are mind control programs in place in all forms of media including social media. You are being brainwashed by a number of programs. Whenever you turn on your cell phone, radio, or TV, become aware of the frequencies that you listen to. 528 is the frequency of love. I try to use that frequency in many of my episodes. Easy to find on, the, on YouTube or the internet. If you can, control those frequencies and vibrations meditate daily meditation will mitigate the energies filtering into your consciousness ask the universe to help you with this that you wish to exit the matrix of mind control 
Here's where you have to begin another aspect of healing your ego. The time has come to face your shadow self. So the 13th step is really to heal your shadow. Withdraw your projection of your faults, lies, and fear onto others and return home to your heart for healing. Get honest with yourself. Write down shadow behaviors, even the most minor of them, such as procrastination, and begin to examine how those are linked to your lack of faith in yourself to accomplish any task. You're born with the tools to complete the jobs in front of you. Why don't you believe you can do it? People have interfered with your gifts whether it was parents or teachers or others who may not have had faith in you. They may have projected their fear, shortcomings, and pains onto you. This may have caused you to develop similar doubts and fears about yourself and your ability to survive in the world. As a result, you may have created and hidden your shadow behaviors from yourself so you could survive. This is different than weeding your mental garden or removing the mask. This is more to do with shadow behaviors, your dark side. That you may be hiding from the world but engage in when no one is looking bring them up to the surface meditate on them make them conscious and write them down look at them own them place your list on the altar put a sacred object on top of it and ask for help from the universe in healing this issue there's a lot of really good authors out there that have dealt with healing your shadow check out what Aaron Abke has said on his channel that's a good place to start, T.L. Swan. The 14th step is creating your web of power. After you've written down all the shadow behaviors, begin to connect them to their origins. Where did they come from? Maybe you began cheating at math because your dad was a math genius and ridiculed your own math skills, so you wanted to look good to your dad. Maybe you were abused when you were small, so you began choosing unhealthy partners in life. Perhaps a role model told you that you would never amount to anything, so you developed bad habits of self-sabotage. Maybe you watch too much TV to escape your responsibilities in life. Make a large, interconnected web on a sheet of paper. Write down each shadow behavior where you think it may have originated from and the name of the person who catalyzed the beginning of this behavior. If it caused a cascade of behaviors, connect them like a spider web, one to the other, so that the pattern becomes clear to you. Be honest. If you started it by yourself, out of selfishness, laziness, greed, or whatever, own it. Write it down. Put your own name next to it. Connect the dots. See the pattern emerge and how one thing led to another. See what shape and direction it takes. It will help you follow the thread back to the wholeness when returning to your healed self. Color it in lightly with color so you can Still the read the behavior and the names connected to them. You can make it look like something, if you want an animal or a monster or a plant, place your shadow web on the altar. Put a secret object. Ask the universe to help you with it. To transform you, to change these things. Be aware of the pattern is enough. The 15th step is mental and it's finding your truth. Make a list of all the beliefs you were taught as a child by your family, in your school, your church, or anywhere else that was significant to you from your youth. They can be beliefs about the world, about life, about your family, your school, your abilities, your appearance, or anything else about yourself or another. For example, I was taught in school that Indians attacked the settlers for no reason and killed them. Later, I learned it was the other way around. Maybe you were taught that you were ugly or stupid or believed that your whole life. Write it down. Maybe you were taught that a certain race of people were bad. Write it down. Maybe you were taught that women were inferior and should stay at home. Or vice versa, that all men were bad. Maybe you were taught that you should always be afraid. Perhaps you were even taught one of your parents was honest, when in reality they were committing fraud and thievery. Write down whatever your early beliefs and myths are. Now that you're an adult, examine these teachings. Are they still correct? Or did you learn that some of them were false? Make a new list at the top of the list. Put two columns, one that is headed by the word true and the other that is headed by the word myth. 
And after you decided which of your beliefs are still true, put them under the column headed true. Those that you now realize are myths, put those under the heading myth. Spend time meditating on this list. Ask your soul to discard any beliefs that aren't true. Even though you know they're not true, they still may be influencing you on some level. Spend some time letting your mind release the falsehoods. See them go. Ask your soul to bring the truth to you. For this part of you will meditate many, many times, listening for the still, small voice of your soul. Cultivate the voice of truth within you. Soon it will be easy to hear. Place your list upon your altar. Put a sacred object on it. Ask the universe to help you heal your issues. The 16th step is to establish your power. One of the things that the matrix does is convince you that you have no power. You feel powerless. When in fact, you are all powerful. One by one, write a statement of personal empowerment to the person who has hurt you or triggered your shadow behavior. Write down how you feel about what they did or how it affected your life. Write about someone that felt like they took away your power. Write that you are done with the damage they caused your life and you're ready to be whole. Inform them you are reclaiming your power. Bring this statement into ceremony. You can bring this into your altar as well. Go through and make a list of the things that have disempowered you. Places in your life where you didn't feel like you had power, where you felt powerless. Identifying these things and then identifying the truth of it is very freeing and very powerful. Close your eyes and visualize yourself cutting off the strands that connect you to those things that disempower you, those beliefs, those ideas, those things, those people in your life. And see this power coming back to you. Identify the behaviors that came from these beliefs that disempowered you. And make it a commitment in the next two or three weeks that you're going to eliminate these. Seventeenth step is to heal your past. Make a list of the wrongs and the bad behaviors and the things that are bothering you and go back and acknowledge them. And use the Neville Goddard method and revise them. Imagine them differently. Let them go. Pull them up into your awareness and release them from your body. There's nothing for you to be ashamed of. Let that part of you that feels this shame wither up and die. Self-love will begin to enter your heart and you'll learn to forgive yourself. As you forgive yourself, even more love enters your being. And as that happens, you'll be able to share even more love with others. And then you can be of service. A peace that will surpass all understanding will begin to arrive once you release these things. It's God's love. Let it in. The 18th step is to anchor your spirituality. Find a spiritual path and begin a daily spiritual practice. It could be 10 minutes of meditation, it could be prayer, whatever it is. To completely heal holistically, the final step is to make the spiritual connection with the energy that empowers the universe we all live in and are connected it. That way you're never empty again. The matrix does not want you to access these energies. It distracts you from accessing these energies. It does not want you to believe that there are external energies inflowing into this planet that you can utilize to empower you. You will never feel empty again when you connect it to this energy. And the matrix wants you to think that this is all bull. It's not. This is your decision, not your parents, your spouse, or your church, your synagogue, your mosque. What is spiritual for a Native American will not be the same for a Christian or a Buddhist. What is Allah to a Muslim will not be the same to a Hindu or Jew. No one can make this decision for you. Make sure you honor the goddess and the God who created us all in your practice. Acknowledge the duality the gender duality of the universe, the goddess and the god. 
acknowledge this inner goddess. Awaken it within you. Understand that you have these different aspects. Anchor to it. Understand these true aspects of yourself. The 19th step is to forgive. I recommend trying my forgiveness meditation. But do an actual ceremony or ritual to forgive yourself and others that you wronged and that wronged you. You have to go through this process. There's a lot of ways you can do it. Ho'oponopono is a good way to start to bring up the things that you are ashamed of. But go about forgiving yourself, letting these things go. The matrix uses these things that you are ashamed of and guilty of to hold you in this reality. You must heal yourself of this. You can create a prayer of forgiveness. Here are some different prayers that you can use. You can share with me in this prayer for now. I sever permanently all bonds, ties, vows, contracts, promises, oaths, and forms of bondage made to the servants of the underworld, the secret societies, entities, or beings, satanic forces, and other lords and ladies of darkness at any point in my soul's sojourn, this life or past lives. I burn those connections with the violet flame. I take back my soul energy, power, truth, dharma, light, and love from you now to be cleansed and utilized for my divine purpose. No one has any power, influence, or control over any aspect of my life or the lives of any humans on earth. All past hurtful or negative connections to me and any other humans are permanently broken and dissolved. I release all ties to you and your beliefs and actions. I take my soul, energy, light, and love for healing and purification to those angels, goddesses, and masters assigned to heal and love me. I am surrounded by the violet flame of purification and God's love. I seek my divinity and divine purpose with God only. I am safe. There were only unconditional love, sacred interaction, and light within my life. I rejoin the oneness that we are all a part of. Thank you for the lesson in power, control, hatred, and bondage. I have learned and rejected in favor of love, sacredness, and forgiveness. I release all of you to your healing and divine purpose. May your darkness be healed and return as divine energies to assist earth and her people. I release this complete karma for all time to the Holy Spirit to be burnt in the fires of the holy flames of compassionate hearts and dissolve for all eternity. We step into the healed earth. There's the prayer of forgiveness. I extend forgiveness to all those who participated in the torture, rape, extortion, delusion, trickery, magic, sorcery, hatred, stealth, lying, sacrifice, and other forms of sacrifice you inflicted upon my soul and the souls of humanity in this and all other lifetimes while in your unconsciousness. I extend my gratitude to you for helping me complete my karma and fully awaken. I apologize to any souls I have hurt in my lifetimes of unconsciousness and ask your forgiveness. I extend forgiveness to myself for any lifetimes where I participated in in those activities out of unconsciousness, fear, or enforced capture or imprisonment through vows or bondage. I release any attachment or resentment to all of you for these actions and dissolve all false connections with you for all eternity. I bathe all previous connections in the violet flame of purification. I release all attachments to pain, judgment, and resentment towards myself for the participating in these false and hurtful actions in other lives and is all all connections to those beliefs thoughts and actions i release these actions and thoughts to the holy flame of the compassionate heart for healing and purification i step into my divinity divine self and secret dharma healed whole and free the 20th step is to create a statement of intention if you read the book reality transurfing you understand why intention is important. It is not what you want, what you desire, what you wish for. It's what you intend to do. Intention is your power. Write a statement of intention. Of how you plan to claim, live, and hold your power, truth, sovereignty, and divine purpose from now on. 
in the beginning of the statement inform your former adversaries or others in your life that you intend to hold them accountable and expect to be treated fairly equally respectfully and lovingly make it your intention to exit the matrix and put that as a part of your intention statement when you make it your intention you'll notice your ability to overcome these manipulations that we've talked about the 21st step is grounding your power you can physically ground yourself by walking barefoot on earth and soil but you can also spiritually ground yourself your power is coming from the earth and above ground yourself to the powers around you place yourself in connection to the infinite energies around you say a prayer of gratitude this way it grounds your intention to the place that you're in now roots you to your current reality but the 22nd step is really probably the most important and the most effective way to escape the matrix give selfless service the more you think of becoming an agent of service giving service to others you will find yourself transforming and overcoming this matrix you can ignore all the other steps the matrix wants you to be all about yourself the matrix wants you to think that you should only be thinking about yourself as a matter of survival but when you are actually selfless not worried about yourself you escape the limitations of the ego and you start to think outside of that box and a lot of these manipulations will go away this is what God wants for you to go through these steps to come out the other side in selfless service there's so many places that need service that you should have no difficulty in finding places to serve what better way to overcome this limited self that you're within now than to not think about it anymore and move outside of yourself it's the final stage on the path to spiritual awakening it's the final stage of ascension the path to service and as you do these steps above and you consider the implications of them you will begin to remember yourself and you will begin to move into a higher level of being so hopefully these different steps some of them will help you action steps yes you can escape the matrix there are things that you can specifically do and that's what this episode is designed around giving you a checklist of things to do to escape the matrix to take that red pill that neo takes in the movie the matrix but remember when you escape the matrix everything isn't what you think it will be it's not going to be a beautiful heaven as it was for neo the world around you could change dramatically once you truly realize the reality that you are within but the thing is when you escape the matrix you truly believe and understand your own power to create reality the creator escapes the matrix and you can create your own reality and once you do that once you escape this limited world where the reality around you is being created where you're sitting on the back of the bus and the bus is driving you without a driver go up to the front of the bus grab the wheel and start driving and that's when you exit the matrix and take over your own reality there's so much more to this and i've filled out a lot of additional answers in many other episodes of this podcast but this is 22 steps and some explanations of what is influencing you and an idea of the matrix that is around you it could be much more than we've talked about on this there's a matrix of energy and reality all around you being created by higher forces by saturn by the moon by who knows what it's not important for you to know exactly the nature of the matrix and who is doing what it's to become aware of its influences and your own habits and rhythms and to escape these things by working within yourself establishing a spiritual core letting go of your past letting go of the things that you're ashamed about forgiving others moving into your own power forgiving your shadow self letting that part of you awaken becoming aware of who you truly are and then moving beyond yourself where you're not even 
worried about yourself anymore. You deeply care to be of service to others. And then once you've reached that, you have escaped from the matrix. For in this new earth, we need to be of service to each other. And we cannot let these myths of the past tell us that we have to live on that old earth forever. These myths and constructions and limitations of the past tell us there is no such thing as the new earth, that we have no power, that we cannot create reality, that it's all chaos, that it's all random. It's not true. Hate, anger, and fear are not what reality is supposed to be made of. Those are not normal. Those are things that are distorting you. Those are things being used to keep you in the matrix. Who creates the matrix? I don't know. But they are not working for your good. They are not working for your soul. They want to limit you and use you like a slave. You have all the power. And you're being told that you don't. And this system is being used against you. They're using your creative powers against you. They know that you can create reality. So they put things for you to fear, to limit yourself, and then they know what kind of reality you're going to create. It's time to overcome that and to move beyond the illusion of Maya and move into a better realization of yourself and what it truly means to live and coexist in this beautiful universe. I'd love to get your comments on how you escaped from the matrix. Do you have a prayer that you say? Is there a technique that you use? Put it in the comments. I want to know. Treat the comments like a laboratory to escape from the matrix. We are living in this illusion and we need to figure out collectively a way for us to escape from this illusion and beyond that to create an illusion that we love to live within. All episodes of The Reality Revolution can be found at therealityrevolution.com and welcome to The Reality Revolution.